I'm going to come in with my 8 out thread, attach it just behind the eye of the hook, snip off the excess, and wrap rearward to the bend of the hook. Now I'm going to come in with my hackle. And I've done a couple things here. Number one, uh, it's important to make sure that the hackle is sized appropriately for the hook. A uh, nice easy visual way to gauge that is when you go, if you wrap this around the shank of the hook, those tips of those hackles should reach right about to the uh, the point of the hook down here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be in that name, same general neighborhood. I've also cleared off a part of the stem here, uh, and that's going to make for an easier tie-in point for me, but I also want to make sure that I leave a little bit of that stem open for my first wrap. That's going to allow those hackle fibers to stand out the way that they need to and allow me to effectively what we call palmer that and then when I tie in this hackle I need to also pay attention to the shape of it um, so when I tie this in there's a concave and a convex side to this right the top side uh, which I want to tie kind of up and off to the side is shinier usually and when you look at the bottom side of the feather it's cupped and it's very dull along the bottom so I want that dull side facing down and toward the back when I go to tie this in so I'll bring this in, hold that in place with my left hand, like I said, making sure that I leave a little bit of that stem uh, for that thread to be able to catch. And you can see that that bare stem is right there uh, behind the tie-in point, so that it'll make for an easy start to my wrapping. So I've got that secured with a couple wraps. Now I'm going to bring in uh, my super fine dubbing. Super fine dubbing is uh, a very lightweight, wispy dubbing. Uh, it helps maintain a little bit of buoyancy in the pattern. And with any kind of dubbing, any, any kind of dubbing, less is always more. Uh, I don't want to take off huge clumps of it. I want to pull off and pluck thin little wispy fibers just off the edge of the clump. With a lot of dubbing, uh, you'll see me put a loon swax uh, on the thread. This is probably my one exception. This stuff compresses uh, and twists onto the thread so nicely that I don't typically use the swax with it. So I'm going to pluck off some fibers. I'm going to create what's called a dubbing rope here. My in my middle finger starts on the thread, and my thumb pushes down and away from my scissors. And I'm going to continue to do that until I have that built up to where I think I have enough to wrap the shank of the hook. Once I have that built up, I'm simply going to wrap this forward with nice thin side-by-side -side wraps. Now you may get to the point where your dubbing rope runs a little bit short and you have to add a little more to finish and that's okay. That's not a big deal. So I'm going to stop just a little bit behind the eye of the hook there. I left just a little bit of a gap and that's going to kind of help me with a little tie in to finish off the fly there. So now I'm going to come in and this is a smaller hackle so I am going to grab this with those rotating hackle pliers. Just going to come in off the end, get it secured, and as I pass around the hook shank, like I said, I want to be able to start off with a bare part of the hackle stem, and that allows that to lay down. I want that cupped side facing back as I start this process, and I want to make, I guess you could say, candy cane stripes, so I'm going to leave spaces in the middle here. And I'm simply going to wrap that forward up to where my thread's at. So when I get to that point, I'm going to bring that thread up, wiggle it down through the hackle fibers once behind it. Keeping tension on that thread, I'm going to let go with the hackle pliers. Gently pull this back, stick the nose of my bobbin right up in there, lay down two or three wraps, and then come in and snip off the excess. Now we're going to be tying an elk hair along the top of the hook shank. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my scissor tips just along the top. And I'm actually going to snip those hackle fibers right out of there. And what that does is it just creates a nice smooth open track for me to work in there with the elk hair. So I've got a patch of a little bit darker elk hair here. Now a lot of people at this point will use what's called a hair stacker. Uh, but I prefer just to stack it by hand, and so I'm going to show that to you real quick. You don't need a ton of elk here. Um, once again, less, I think, is always more. 
uh, for the most part in the world of fly tying. So I'm going to take uh, a little bit of a pinch here within my finger, my fourth thumb. There's probably, I don't know, a dozen elk hairs in there. And I'm just going to snip those off. So when we stack in my hand, I take these hairs and I have them kind of in this little triangle that's between my thumb, uh, my middle finger, and my index finger. And I very simply lay the palm of my hand out flat, loosen my grip on those hairs, and just kind of tap that up and down a few times. And after I've done that a couple times, the tips of those hairs, you can see, are fairly well lined up at the end. So when I go to tie this wing in, I want it to just extend just past the bend of the hook. So I'm going to kind of mark that out. Now the thing with elk hair, similar to deer hair, is that it will compress a little bit. And so my first wrap or two is going to be loose. So I'm just going to get a loose wrap, one, two, and then I'm going to snug down a little bit and you can see it kind of flare out. Do one or two more wraps there. And then what I like to do is come right here and lift the elk hair up. Stick the nose of that bobbin down there. Take a half a dozen wraps right onto the hook shank. And this just helps to anchor it in place. And then at this point you can come in and you could either finish this with a couple half hitches or you could whip finish it by hand. Snip off that extra thread. Before we hit that head with the zappa gap, we're going to come in these butt ends here that I've left. We're going to trim those off. And this does a nice job of creating a, a silhouette that's similar to the, the head of the adult caddis. So you can see the kind of angular taper of the wing that comes up here. I'm going to come in just about an eighth of an inch above the eye of the hook. And at that same angle, I'm going to snip those hairs off. Once again, these are the butt ends of the hairs. Lastly, for the sake of durability, we're going to come in with a little drop of zappa gap. And I'm going to hit this on the bottom of the hook shank. And I'm also going to rotate and I'm going to drop that right down in that neck and run that across the thread.